This is a video introduction to the PPAT exam. And it is also going to review what the contents of task one are. The PPAT is the Praxis Performance Assessment for Teachers. What is it? It's a test. So this is an assessment tool that's used in the certification of teachers. And it basically checks to make sure that future teachers have knowledge of the in-task model core teaching standards. It is made up of four sections, which are called tasks, and these tasks are distributed throughout the student teaching semester. Task one is all about knowledge of students and the learning environment. Task two is about assessment and data collection to measure and inform student learning. Task three is about designing instruction for student learning. And task four is about implementing and analyzing instruction to promote student learning. So task one is formative and tasks two through four are summative. And here's just a quick review of the difference between formative and summative. A formative assessment is meant to monitor a student's learning to provide ongoing feedback that can be used by instructors to improve their teaching and by students to improve their learning. These are the kinds of assessments that are done early and often. And then a summative assessment, um, it has the goal of evaluating a student's learning at the end of a unit or a semester and then comparing it against some kind of standard benchmark, so some type of rubric. A good way to think of this is that uh, a formative assessment is when you're making the soup, you're the chef, and you taste the soup. So you can check on how the, the soup is going <laughs> before you actually serve it to anyone. And once you do that little taste test, then you can make adjustments. You can add some salt, you know, add a little bit more broth. Um, the summative assessment, it's a kind of, uh, it's too late to adjust what you're doing. Um, this is when the guests are going to taste your soup. So when does this occur? It's going to take place during your professional trimester, so while you're student teaching. And it's administered twice per year by ETS to align with uh, the student teaching semesters. So if you're student teaching in the fall, you want to make sure that you register um, registration opens in early August and closes uh, early to mid-September. And if you're going to student teach in the spring, the registration still opens in August, but it's going to close early in February. And then the deadline for each of those PPAT tasks, tasks one through four, they're distributed throughout the fall or spring semester. How much does it cost? And I want to bring your attention to two things. First, the registration fee is $300. And then see this bottom line here that says the score review fee, that's the price per task. Remember there are four tasks. So the total minimum that you can expect to pay for this exam is $700. Uh, plus any, there's, all, you know, there's always going to be some kind of processing fee for when you register or if you use a credit card. And then there are other fees for if you reschedule. So if you're gonna, if you sign up for for the fall and then you want to reschedule for the spring, that's 40 bucks. If you don't pass one of the tasks and you resubmit that task, that's 75 dollars. If you register late, that's 40 dollars. And if you are late submitting any of the tasks, that's 50 dollars. So you want to make sure that you register on time and that you turn in all of your items on time. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a minimum of $700. On the rest of these slides, there's going to be a lot of information. The purpose of this presentation right now is just to give you the general idea of what task one is all about and what types of materials you're going to have to submit for task one. But the slides for this presentation are available in the description box below. So click on that link and you can download these slides and read them completely. So task one is all about getting to know your students and your teaching site and the community in which you are teaching. And every single task has specific in-task standards that it is going to be testing you on. And um, I have them listed here on the next three slides. And again, you can download the slides 
and read those on your own time. Okay, task one has the following elements. There's gonna be a written commentary. And they say the max number of characters is 21,000 characters. And you may think, oh my God, 21,000 characters. That's a lot, but that's characters. That's letters and spaces and periods. So it actually works out to about seven typed pages, which that's, you know, an average uh, size for a typical college paper. Also, the way that you're gonna be submitting those um, 21,000 characters is not in like one big block of seven pages you're going to have this running commentary in which you address guiding prompts of um, a series of activities. And those activities are going to be completing the contextual factors chart, responding to the identified resources, which is you're going to create and then respond to the instructional and support resources chart, understanding classroom norms, protocols, and agreements, getting to know your students, understanding your students, and communicating with your students' families. So there are going to be a series of prompts that they're going to ask you to, to respond to, answer questions, focus on students, um, talk about certain things from these charts that you fill out, and all of those responses should add up to 21,000 characters. Oh, sorry. And then along with that commentary, you are going to have to submit some artifacts. You're going to complete the contextual factors chart, and that should be a maximum of three pages. You're going to complete the instructional and support resources chart, and that's going to be a maximum of three pages. You are going to create a uh, get to know your students lesson, and you need to submit a document um, about that lesson, probably your lesson plan, and that's a maximum of two pages. And then finally, you're going to submit one document that demonstrates communication with students' families, and that needs to be a maximum of one page. So you have a written commentary and four artifacts that you need to submit. Very briefly, I'm just going to go over each of these activities that you're going to respond to. But again, you can take some time to really um, read through the slides on your own time. So first you're gonna create your contextual factors chart and then you are going to respond to it. So this, the, like I said, the whole point of task one is for you to get to know the place where you're teaching. So on this chart, you're going to um, fill in information, knowledge of individual students. Now you don't need to use students' names. General classroom information, information about the school and the district and information about the community. And then based on the information that you fill in and your teaching assignment is the school where you know, you're know you placed, um, then you're gonna respond to prompts based on one community and one school and district factor. And those prompts are, uh, and they're the same for both the community factor and the school and district factor. So pick one factor from both of those categories and then based on your chosen community factor or school district factor, identify and describe one possible instructional strategy and one learning activity that you could use in your classroom to further student learning. Provide a rationale that explains how the identified strategy and activity connect to the chosen factor. Every one of these activities, I just, I want you to think of them as, hey, I need to create a lesson plan. And so in this case, I need to look at a community factor and I need to create a lesson plan that's going to respond to that community factor, involve that community factor, and, um, and make sure that it has the instructional strategies that I'm going to use within that lesson plan. The next activity is to um, fill in your instructional and support resources chart. I think this is a great idea. Um, you want to know what resources are already there. You do not want to spend time reinventing the wheel, coming up with your own handbook, if all this information is already there and available for you. So the types of resources could be within the community, within your building or the district, um, the support staff that work at your school or in the district, um, and then instructional materials that are already available. And then you just need to put one example and its source in the right hand side of the chart. And then based on that, you're gonna to respond to these prompts. You're gonna select two resources from that completed instructional and support resources chart and explain how would you, you would use each in your classroom to support student learning. 
and then select a particular characteristic that you listed under the first chart that you filled out, the knowledge of individual students in the, con uh, in the contextual factors chart. And then based on the selected characteristic, explain how a resource from the instructional and support resources chart different from the two that you just discussed, discussed in the previous prompt could enhance student learning. So again, for each of these things, just think, okay, how would I create a lesson plan um, that would involve the things that are in this, in um, this part, you know, sub part of this task. Okay, the next activity is learning about the norms, protocols, and agreements that already exist in your classroom. So um, you're going to talk with your cooperating teacher, with the principal, with staff. You're going to look on websites for information, handbooks, um, maybe meeting minutes, and then respond to these prompts. Describe one example of a classroom norm, protocol, or agreement and explain how the norm, protocol, or agreement facilitates instruction, enhances student learning, and or impacts the learning environment. Describe one example of a technology norm, protocol, or agreement. Explain how the norm, protocol, or agreement facilitates instruction, enhances student learning, and or impacts the learning environment. And then you will do the same thing. You're going to identify and describe one norm, protocol, or agreement that you and your students could create together. And then the rest of um, the explanation is, is the same as the first two guided prompts here. So um, this is very interesting. I like this idea because sometimes your students have a better idea um, for <laughs> what what they want from maybe a classroom routine than, than you had thought of in the past. So involve them in what the decision making for what the rules should be in your classroom. All right, the next activity is all about getting to know your students. So you are going to choose a meaningful whole class activity that honors and values your students as unique individuals. Give each student in your class the opportunity to participate in the activity so that you can gather information relevant to your students' interest and then respond to the guiding prompts below. Now, you have to submit an artifact of this experience and that um, artifact needs to be two pages so it could be uh, one page could be the lesson plan for the activity and one page could be um, the data and the information that you collect from your students just keep it anonymous and then here are your guided prompts based on the compilation of information from the results of the getting to know your students activity analyze one example of how this information would influence a whole class instructional decision you would make provide a rationale for your decision. Using one student's completed getting to know your students activity, analyze how this information would influence an instructional decision you would make for the student. Provide a rationale for your decision. The next activity is understanding your students. So a core feature of exemplary teaching is getting to know and understand your students as unique individuals. So in, in this, you're actually going to um, find two focus students, and then you're going to um, describe each identified focus student's cultural and linguistic assets, lived experiences, and academic strengths and learning needs. Now, you may have already identified these students in the, the first chart that you completed. And then explain how each of these two students contributes to the learning environment of your classroom. And then you're going to discuss these two focus students. You're never going to name them. You'll just call them focus student one and focus student two. And the instructions for both are the same. Identify and describe one possible instructional strategy and one learning activity that you and the student could create together to use in your classroom to support the student. And I like that you can, you know, create it together. Explain how the identified strategy and activity reflect your understanding and appreciation of the student's cultural and linguistic assets, lived experiences, academic strengths, and learning needs. And the last activity is communicating with your students' families. And you are basically going to create a communication to send to your students, families, or caregivers, and then track the response of that communication. 
And then these are your prompts. Explain how your method of communication conveys the importance of cultivating positive relationships with students and their families. Use examples from your communication to, export, uh, to support your explanation. Explain how your method of communication fostered interaction among you, your students, and your students' families. Use examples to support your explanation. Describe the overall response you received from your communication. How will this response impact an instructional decision you will make in your classroom? Use examples from the responses you received to support your analysis. So those are all the tasks. And I just want to, now that we've gone over each activity, return to this slide. So again, task one, it's all about getting to know your school district and your students and the community of that school district. It's gonna involve a written commentary, which by the time you respond to all those prompts, this is gonna be no problem to reach this number of characters. I think the problem will be having it within 21,000 characters. The com you you'll submit the commentary, and then again, you have four artifacts that you also submit. The contextual factors chart, that's where you're gonna learn about all the background information about the school and community and your students that's gonna affect your teaching. You're gonna fill out the instructional and support resources chart. What resources are already in place for you? You're going to compile a getting to know your students document and then you are going to submit one document that demonstrates communication with your students' families. Task one is graded in-house. It is not graded by ETS. It is graded by um, your advisor and by the coordinator of the professional trimester. So that is it for task one. Remember that you can download the slides down below and go through this content very slowly on your own and take notes if you need to. And from now on, be thinking about how you can incorporate these types of tasks and activities in everything that you do during your undergraduate education experience.